Hey there, Eli again coming at you from OSA Coventry here today to talk a little bit about refugiums and their benefits to reef aquaria. So in this tank in front of me here, I've got a huge ball of catamorpha algae. This is a type of macro algae that is very good at growing and taking up nutrients in the aquarium setting. This is something that a lot of people will throw in small areas of their sumps or might grow in a reactor in tandem to their sump filtration in a reef tank. And the idea with this is as it grows, it's going to pull excess nutrients from the water column. These main nutrients being nitrogen and phosphorus, nitrates and phosphates, as well as some of your major and minor trace elements as well. So as this algae grows up, it actually helps to purify your water. And in the process of pulling these nutrients from the water column is a natural biological way to kind of mitigate any nuisance algae growth in the aquarium. And what do I mean by that is, as the Cato grows and as it takes up those nutrients, it's generally such a quick grower that it will actually starve any of your nuisance algae out from these same sort of nutrients. So it does come in handy to have a refugium or have a macroalgae reactor that you might grow something like Catamorpha algae or dragon's breath, any of these macroalgae that grow fast enough to help pull those nutrients. In comparison to using um, chemical media, say GFO, Purigen, or any of these other things, a lot of people prefer using macroalgae or using Kato because it is a biological process as opposed to using chemicals in the aquarium. And it does have some other benefits as well. As you can see in this ball of Kato next to me, there is an insane amount of surface area in this clump of Kato. Generally, once you have a good amount of Kato seeded in your aquarium, it's going to be loaded with macro and micro invertebrates, whether that be copepods, amphipods, gamaris, bristle worms, any of these other things. It tends to offer a safe haven for a lot of these beneficial cleanup crew members. And a lot of people don't necessarily consider your small invertebrates, copepods and such as cleanup crew, but they truly are. And generally having a robust colony of macroalgae in the tank offers enough surface area for these animals to hide. Hence the term refugium that people tend to throw around in referring to a Cato refugium is that it offers some sort of refuge for all of these smaller invertebrates to hide from the main display tank. So in theory, if you have a large amount of Cato growing in a refugium or in your sump, over time, slowly, animals are going to move away from the Cato, whether those be pods or whatever, and they end up in your main display tank. So just in keeping that Cato algae in your sump, in your refugium, you actually are constantly seeding the tank with copepods. In addition, as this grows, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to pull those nutrients. Once you fill up that space, just simply trimming it back and keeping a small clump of Cato in your sump, and then tossing the rest or sharing it with friends, trading it for corals is a great way to actually make sure that those nutrients cannot re-enter your water column. And as this grows from that point, it is going to continue that same idea. One of the greatest benefits of having a Cato Refugium also comes down to pH swings and stability in the reef tank. So as with any photosynthetic organism, during the sunlight hours, Catomorpha, Cato algae, any of your macro algaes are going to use CO2 from the water column which as they actively pull that from the water helps to buffer the pH higher. So it will raise your pH. And at nighttime or during uh, the dark hours, it will produce a small amount of CO2, but never more than it actually consumed during the daytime. A lot of people like to run their refugiums on a reverse photo period from what their display tank is kept at. So if your display tank is running lights during the daytime and then at night you swap it over so the display is dark and the refugium is lit, you get a constant photosynthetic action within the aquarium and a constant draw of CO2 from the livestock. So the macroalgae itself is going to still be pulling CO2 during the dark hours. You don't get so drastic of a pH swing during the night hours in your display tank. So a lot of people like it for that effect just to keep their pH more stable and in practice, it does work quite well. And oftentimes in refugiums too, Catamorpha may not be the best example, but some of your other macro algaes, if you grow something like Dragon's Breath or Ulva or some of these other algaes, they can actually be used as a food for herbivorous animals. So if you have tangs in your display tank, when you're harvesting your macro algae from the sump or from your reactor, a lot of people will actually just feed it back to their display tank, which would give you a little more of a net neutral nutrient cycling in the aquarium. So as that algae pulls it out, and if you are to feed this algae back to your tank, you are not necessarily adding new nutrients to that cycle that weren't already present. So overall, keeping a refugium, whether you grow Kato or you grow any of your other types of macro algae in a sump or in a reactor, in any sort of refugium, 
you get those big benefits I just talked about, whether it is harboring growth of small invertebrates that your animals can eat, or whether the algae itself serves as a food down the road for your fish. It also gives you those benefits of pH stabilization and removal of nitrogen and phosphorus from your aquarium setting to help you out in between water changes. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And as always, keep on reefing.